Well, Martin, Bebo, that, that matter of, of jurisdiction, that's, that's, that's it briefly, because you, because one of the major issues that came up when Alexander Penyomarkin went to the Supreme Court was this matter of whether the Supreme Court really was the right court to, to be invoked in this matter. The Supreme Court, as you heard the Chief Justice there, made a clear and emphatic declaration on that, that they had jurisdiction to hear this, or the original jurisdiction gives them the powers to hear this particular case. Why did you argue otherwise? Uh, did I? Um, I'm not. Um, so let's let's put it this way. I do not exactly fault the Supreme Court for saying it has jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I do not do so much because what what's the bottom line is that you see, uh, you see several lawyers. Kingsley is here. Bobby, my, uh, honorable, honorable Daffy, I'm poor myself. They'll tell you that uh, what we need to understand is that in law, we have different uh, philosophical uh, schools of thought. So it depends on where you belong. Mm. It depends on where you belong. So you see that that's how come one key thing I keep saying that if you want to understand this Supreme Court decision, you need to understand the philosophical leanings of the judges. So they say that they have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It belongs to one school of thought. So if you don't belong there, hmm? so if you are a literalist, you will say, oh, yes, they see that, oh, uh, one person says the, the, the actions of the four MPs are not to take effect in this particular parliament. Mm -hmm. And so they belong to the future, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So because one says it's for the future and another group of people say, no, the actions of the four MPs will affect their seats in the current parliament, mm -hmm. then it means that there is a dispute. Right. So if you do it literally like that, you would uh, actually say the Supreme Court doesn't have a, uh, listen, the Supreme Court was right, right? Mm -hmm. But when you are a realist, okay, mm -hmm. you are a realist, then you go beyond just what you see literally. What I see beyond this one saying, oh, it's for the future, and this one saying, no, they force it, their actions by going to file independent, etc., will affect them currently. Is that there is politics at play here. If you say it affects them today, MPP will become the minority, mm -hmm. and NDC will become the majority. So quickly, People will go and hide behind constitutional provisions. I'm a realist. I'm not going to do that. Oh, if you go by the literalist approach, uh, the guidelines from the Supreme Court, well, long ago, from to four versus attorney judge, there are too many Supreme Court decisions. We don't want to go into Supreme Court decisions and make this overly technical. So I'll just make the main points. Mm -hmm. So if you're just going by the literalist approach, you say the Supreme Court has jurisdiction. But if you're a realist, you see that this is a ruse. The provision is very clear, and the same Supreme Court. Look, lawyers will tell you, even Bobby was there uh, recently, the uh, celebrities doing uh, adverts, etc. right? Mm -hmm. There are many decisions they will tell you that, look, this thing, they don't see anything wrong. There is no interpretation arising. The mm -hmm. thing is very clear. Don't come and waste our time here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they even sometimes, from the way they react, it's just like um, we are not doing a good job as lawyers, right? They say, ah, but this thing is clear. Why are you wasting our time, etc. I'm telling you that. 97 clause 1, G and H are also very clear to me. But I'm a realist because what I see beneath this case is plain politics, partisan politics, NDC versus MPP, which has been dressed up as a constitutional interpretation matter, but it is not. So because we have different jurisprudential views, mm -hmm. etc., you find the Supreme Court saying for them they see a jurisdictional issue. So on that basis, you can't fault them because, you see, finally, they are the ones you've given the power to. We can't fault them right now, but rather what we will begin to fault is the constitution and the power of the president to appoint. Because when the president is appointing, I told you, like, I mentioned the last, like, the week before last week, the president will not appoint Honorable Dafia Mepo because he knows Dafia Mepo is what? MPP, I'm sorry, NDC. Right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm switching here, forgive me. <laughs> you see? So they will not appoint that fair because they know, hey, he said this. Is. So if the matter comes, because in law we have different viewpoints, he will take the viewpoint that will enable him to rule against the president's uh, wishes. You see the selection? Mm -hmm. So devil selection. You line up and select the people who are sympathetic to your views. That, that one will say plainly. You see? They will say plainly, you see all the lawyers, because their qualification to the Supreme Court, I tell you, 
There is no exam, so. There is no exams. After 15 years at the bar, whether maybe you're a judge or you are a lawyer at the bar, you qualify. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other things like you shouldn't have moral turpitude, those ones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm talking about the main criteria. 15 years. If you're a lawyer for 15 years, you qualify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And so look at the lawyers. We're over 4,000. And many of them are more than 15 years. Including By, yourself? Yes, yes. I'm 17. This is my 18th year. I see. So, when they are selecting Supreme Court, and did you see the last time they were selecting? They said, oh, people, you to come. We see you are very passionate about uh, this and governance. Come and take a seat on the Supreme Court. Did you see? No. They will select people who has, they see from their track record. Look, affiliations. Look, if you don't say this, this democracy will not grow. It's my affiliations. Sure. You think if you don't know the president or they are not comfortable with you, anybody will make a mistake and say, go and sit on the Supreme Court. Whether NDC, MPP, is the same thing. So in short, the Supreme Court is more of a political organization. We will not be uh, shy to say that. Because if we don't do that, you won't understand the decisions. If we don't do that, you won't understand the political I decisions. I disagree with the NDC. Uh, uh, look, you guys do the same no, thing you do. No, I disagree. NDC, and MPP, you, you choose your friends. No, your friends. NDC That's what happens. Friends, uh, you choose Supreme people Court. who are sympathetic no, to your... So if you NDC want to be born... So let me show you how it is that. Okay. Why you don't want to use the word friends and people who are affiliated to you? The way to hide it is to say, oh, people whose jurisprudential views are aligned with your party. So that's big English. The anyway. plain meaning of it is people who are friends with you. That is it. If you want to understand it, plain English. Let's not go and speak, oh, people who philosophically are uh, aligned with you. Uh, no, no, no. That, okay. When you hear philosophically aligned with one party or your views, the right. plain meaning of it is when you are okay. friends, when we are comfortable, when we can go to bed, knowing that when a matter like this comes, you will vote for us. That is it. So you don't fault the Supreme Court on this jurisdictional matter? The yes, the but what I'm right. faulting is the way our so, so, constitution is so weak, so lopsided, that it gives the president the power to choose Supreme Court judges. Going forward, we don't want such a provision. Even okay. the Chief Justice herself hinted at it at her vetting, where she said no. She thinks the constitutional provisions, 148, etc., giving the president a role in the discipline of judges, etc., it's not good for our democracy. That's well, Chief Justice Tokonu herself saying it. It's not good because it's weakening the institutions of governor. Because look, if you look at a constitution right now, the way it's modeled there, it's like you buy one, you get one free. So you get the executive, then you get control of the judiciary through appointments. So by one, by the executive through elections, you campaign and you become president, then you get to control judiciary through appointments, etc. It's not only the discipline. Chief Justice Tokono has also had occasion to complain that the executive will not release money to the judiciary, right? They sit on the money, uh -huh, you know, kind of sit on the money. Don't release, don't release releases that are due. And what do you do? Through that, you influence them. Influence them. Yes, she said it. She said it. So for our democracy, please, Moving forward, this then that the president would appoint high court, court of appeal, and supreme court judges is the first provision to go if you want this democracy to grow. Because right, right now, as I sit and look at Article 97 and see mm. that this is a storm in a teacup, the thing is very clear. It says that, look, H, if the person, so one. H says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. H, let's start with the easier one. If he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. So as we sit now, the papers that uh, were filed at the EC for Esiama, what did they say? Is Esiama an uh, independent candidate at the EC? His MPP. It's MPP that filed for him. So what is mm -hmm. constitutional interpretation about this? What is constitutional interpretation? Esiama is MPP today. If you say the provision is for the future parliament, so are we saying that Esiama should win the elections, let's say, for example, he wins on December 7th. And then just after winning on December 7th, let's say January 7th, they are sworn in. And then mm -hmm. because those who say the election is for the future, Esiama who is just sworn in on, let's say, January 7th, 2025, immediately will lose the seat. Those who are saying that if you join a political party, meaning he's joined a political party in future. So he's just won the elections, sworn in, and immediately he loses the seat. And so we have to go for a new by-election. What kind of interpretation well, well, is but, this? But I hear that the, the Attorney General also make that point that to the extent that there is some...
controversy about the meaning and interpretation of this. There is no better mechanism in seeking clarity about the controversy in the application of the Constitution than to seek that interpretation at the Supreme Court. That's why. So it still comes back to the same thing. So you see how the thing has been arranged. It's a ruse. That's why I told you, if you are doing a literalist interpretation, you say, oh, this one says this, this one says this. So because of that, there's a controversy. That's mm -hmm. what the Attorney General is saying. It's politics. So they know mm -hmm. by the time they go through the process, aren't we left with two months and uh, about 10 days, or it's even less, to the end of the life of this parliament? Yeah, because we just have uh, November, December, and then January, seven days, right? Mm -hmm. So six, two... No, as Actually, the seven, uh, six, six days. Two. Okay, that's not So six days in, in January. So two months, and today is second. So two months and what? Four days to the end. So when it tells you that there's a controversy, that's the point that I'm making. So a literalist, really, when we say literalist, meaning that you are just taking it on the face of it. So you hear mm -hmm. there's a literalist school, okay, there's a modern purposive approach, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mischief, etc. Various ways of interpreting the constitution. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying that. So in this case, when they choose to say there's a controversy, it's convenient because it then affords them opportunity to go to court for that process. So if, let's say, you go to court and then by the time you are done, the life of parliament too has come to an end. But then they would have achieved their purpose, which is that they don't want to lose the majority in parliament. That's the whole thing. So say that there's a controversy. Yes, there's a controversy. Let's go to court. I know the court decision is not one day. Even this promise that we should, the, the, the court would deliver judgment on the 9th of November. That's very fast, eh? very fast. The court, uh, sorry, 11th of 11th. Uh, mm -hmm. November. 11th. The Supreme Court says on that day to deliver judgment. So even if you take it to 11th, so you see when this thing started, 18th. The Supreme Court gave a decision on the 18th, right? Of October. Uh -huh. Then it's dragged down, hopefully 11th. So within all this time, you've prevented the NDC from becoming what? Majority. So it serves a certain purpose, right? So the point we're making is that even when there's no controversy, people uh, who find it con convenient to say there's a controversy, and then they already know that there are people who have been appointed and they are aligned in terms of philosophical views with the way the MPP sees things. Uh -huh. So they are confident that let's go to court. Uh -huh. They say when somebody keeps challenging you, let's go to court, let's go to court. Be very careful. Be very, very careful. And they say, let's go. Yes, let's go to court. Hey. Well, and this is the point where, this, hold on, and, and we'll, we'll get to the other 